And uh, the next part will be started by uh, Einar Saunich, head of Department of Zoology and Animal Ecology. And he is one of our main experts summarizing monitoring results. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Einar Saunich, uh, and I'm working here in this building. So I'm representing the University of, um, of Latvia. And I was asked to the, today to give a, a presentation about uh, um, uh, trends of uh, the common forest uh, birds. Uh, uh, how this uh, group of species is uh, performing. And in, indeed, uh, this is quite appropriate time to, to, to give such a presentation because uh, the results are very new um, uh, that, that include um, all, all, uh, this year's breeding season. So it's um, approximately 10, uh, 10 days uh, since uh, that uh, trends and indices have been cal calculated. But, so in the beginning, uh, the data come um, from the Latvian um, Breeding bird counts, um, which is um, organized by the Latvian Ornithological Society. Uh, this is a volunteer based um, scheme, and um, it was started in um, 2005. So it's a 13 year um, stretch um, at, at this moment uh, 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 where we can look uh, how the birds have performed. And, uh, um, uh, this um, uh, monitoring scheme has been included in the in, in the uh, national uh, biodiversity monitoring prog program as as one of the schemes, and um, uh, and this uh, monitoring program is funded by the um, uh, Latvian Nature Conservation Agency. Uh, so within uh, this scheme, uh, about uh, for, from 40 to 50. Roots are um, uh, counted uh, annually um, by, by, by different uh, uh, bird watchers. And um, uh, the choice, uh, choice of the uh, bird count roots is a uh, uh, combination from um, uh, systematic and r random approach. Um, first, there's, there is a predefined uh, layout of the um, available monitoring sc uh, squares. And, um, and then uh, uh, the uh, bird watcher uh, chooses one of these squares, which is probably close to the, his um, uh, home or, or, uh, or his country house. And then, uh, then uh, the actual position of the uh, uh, route is, um, is decided um, uh, using a ra random ap approach. Uh, this is where we avoid uh, some um, biases to, towards um, the uh, bird-rich places, um, uh, which, which is a cl classical um, uh, problem with uh, monitoring programs uh, having uh, free choice uh, routes. Um, each monitoring route uh, consists of um, two parallel lines. Each of the lines is um, uh, two kilometers long, and so altogether the route where, where birds are counted is um, four kilometers. And the two lines are uh, lay one kilometer apart from each each other, and um, as, as you can see in the, in the picture on the uh, topographic map on the on the Landsat satellite image, and um, I, the lines are divided into um, 500 meter sections. Uh, section length is uh, 500 meters, and. Um, um, the actual counting is 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 done um, using. Uh, the approach uh, so that the uh, with recording distance uh, so that the data can be used uh, um, uh, for uh, 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 for uh, distance sampling methods and um, uh, so we have um, uh, three dis distance belts the closest uh, belt uh, up to 25 meters to the transect line um, uh, then uh, beyond this uh, this line up to 100 meters and the th third belt is all the birds which are beyond um, uh, 100 me meter. And the um, observations are, are, are divided in, into uh, breeders and uh, non-breeders. Uh, and breeders are interpreted in, in the breeding pairs. 
Uh, the uh, counts are performed uh, four times per, uh, per season. You, you can see the, uh, the dates. Um, uh, or, or rather um, uh, time intervals when these uh, counts um, uh, can, uh, can or should be done. And um, um, du during the counts, each of the ob observers um, has uh, these uh, se detailed section maps, which, uh, which are the or orthophoto ba background, where you can see actually every tree or um, tree or bush so uh, so the observa all the observations are mapped but uh, are mapped but um, finally these are uh, summarized summarized for each of the section dividing the birds um, according to uh, breeding status and also to the, according to the distance built um, where they have been recorded um, so currently, the uh, layout of actual uh, routes, uh, which have been uh, counted within this, uh, this period um, when the scheme is working, um, you, you can see now on the screen. Of course, not every, uh, every route has been counted every year. Uh, there, there are um, uh, time gaps and miss, uh, missing data. Uh, uh, data uh, for for um, a large part part of the routes, because um, as um, in in the um, uh, volunteer based um, program, you, uh, it's uh, never possible to ensure that uh, that every person um, has a time um, to to count um, uh, all, all, all the uh, all the three or um, or four four counts per season um, uh, every year. Uh, so, uh, what kind of outputs uh, do we get? Um, we uh, calculate uh, the annual uh, population indices for more than um, 100 bird species. Uh, of course, uh, these are the uh, more than 100 most common ones. And um, out of these indices, we get um, annual population trends. And, um, and um, uh, these uh, population indices are further used for, um, uh, for the... Um, um, com com uh, compl complex uh, indicators such as uh, uh, farmland bird in index and forest bird index, um, where these uh, in the individual species indices are um, aggregated into multi species in indices. And um, uh, we also use uh, the data from, from this scheme for um, calculating population estimates using distance sampling. Um, uh, hierarchical di distance sampling, but uh, this is not done um, every year uh, on, on routine base. Uh, this is uh, for um, only, only for the special needs. Uh, so, um, um, regarding the uh, trend analysis, we use the, the classical approach, which is, uh, which is suggested uh, by the um, 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 European uh, Bird Census Council. Uh, we use uh, uh, trim. Um, trim software, which is uh, basically state-based models uh, where, the, where the counts are expla uh, explained by uh, site and year effects. And um, uh, so, so um, uh, this, um, uh, this um, uh, program is um, very suited uh, to these, uh, the, these type of counts uh, where uh, there are qu quite many missing data as uh, the ap approach uh, includes um, imputation of these um, uh, missing data, um, uh, data. and um, finally, we uh, the output we get is uh, are the population indices, out of which we get um, 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 linear, uh, linear trend, or uh, actually this um, uh, this um, multiplica multiplicative uh, slope and its uh, st standard errors um, and confidence interval. And um, uh, th there is also this, uh, a scheme where uh, how we classify, uh, classify these trends. Again, then, uh, this is a scheme uh, s uh, suggested by, by the uh, European, uh, European uh, Bird Census Council, where um, uh, the classification, um, as you see, the, uh, uh, the categories are, are uh, uh, two, two categories of uh, uh, No, it's not working. Okay, uh, there are two categories of um, of, of increase: um, uh, steep and moderate. Um, uh, in, in this case, this is uh, the. Uh, 
um, um, if um, if the confidence it, um, the classification of the trends is based on the uh, on the confidence inter intervals of the trend slope if it um, um, okay thanks um, uh, so if um, if these confidence uh, intervals doesn't include one, um, uh, then um, then it's either either I increase or, um, or or decline, and um, of course um, uh, the, these are further divided into strong and mo moderating um, increase. The population can be stable if it includes one, but the, um, the confidence intervals are um, uh, narrow enough. Um, uh, narrow enough to cl classify in the, um, this way. If they are uh, too too wide, the uh, the, uh, the trends are classified as um, uncertain. Uh, so uh, this is a brief brief summary of the um, uh, current trends. Um, there are two separate uh, columns um, uh, for two time intervals. Um, the the whole period, uh, which is from the start of the scheme. Um, until until um, uh, this breeding season, and uh, then uh, the, the, there is uh, only the last uh, five years, and um, and, and then, uh, uh, um, uh, one part is for all birds, uh, birds, um, all, all one, 106 species uh, for for which uh, this year the trends and indices have been calculated, and um, uh, uh, the second part are only. Um, those birds um, uh, which are li linked to the f forest, uh, which is um, approximately uh, half, a, uh, ha half of the species. Um, as, as you can see, um, on the um, uh, whole term, uh, these uh, 13 years, there are more species in increasing than uh, declining. Um, approximately the same amount as, um, as in increasing are, are stable. And um, a large part of uh, are, are still uncert uncertain due to wide confidence intervals. Um, 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 if you look on the uh, forest birds um, uh, for the same same pe period, actually the uh, pattern is uh, uh, more or less the, the same, uh, uh, just a smaller a smaller number of species. If we look on the uh, last five years, uh, the situation is um, a bit different, as. Um, 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 as um, we can see that uh, there are more declining species, significantly de declining species than, in, uh, than those increasing. Of course, this is a, a shorter trend and, uh, and, um, and a wider, pop uh, wider part of, uh, la uh, larger part, uh, part of the species analyzed have um, uncertain trends. If you look on the um, uh, 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 trends uh, of the uh, of these um, 54 uh, birds uh, which can be linked to the forests, we can tr uh, see uh, basically the same pa pattern as, uh, as, as in all, all the other species. Um, if we look on the, um, on, on the trends by um, uh, dividing by the uh, different um, ecosystems uh, for, for the same, same two, pe two periods and also accounting for the, uh, their migration strategy, we can basically see that uh, um, that uh, for forest spe species are are not the, not doing worse uh, than, um, uh, than than the species of of um, of um, other um, uh, major habitat uh, types, um, and um, also if we look on the um, short-term trends, also they are mostly centered um, around. One, uh, uh, the, the trend slopes are centered around one, which is uh, um, which is ba ba basically is stable. And uh, for example, for, um, uh, farmland birds are, are uh, especially those wintering in uh, in Africa are um, uh, doing uh, significantly significantly worse. And um, 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 it, it's uh, of course interesting uh, also that uh, these um, uh, African wintering species, which have uh, worse uh, trends um, elsewhere in in Europe. In in this case, uh, uh, neither in a shorter trend or in a, in a, or in a lo lo longer trend doesn't uh, show up as be being um, significantly worse. Um, I can uh, rather point out those uh, those uh, more or more or less um, resident species which occur um, all year round, 
um, um, they are uh, uh, much wider spread of, uh, of their trends, um, um, uh, both, uh, both in, in the short term and, uh, and, and this lo longer term. Uh, and um, uh, we can see more species with, uh, with, um, uh, uh, which, uh, whose trends are con considerably worse um, uh, than uh, co compared to, uh, to the others. So, uh, so uh, this suggests uh, that uh, something is go going on um, r right here. Um, um, looking um, uh, separately at the forest birds, um, looking at, at their trends, I, I tried to look uh, on uh, uh, can I explain these uh, different trends uh, using uh, uh, different traits of, the, of these birds. Of course, um, uh, as I just shown, uh, looking at this migration strategy, also of their preferred food or or uh, their um, edge preference or, or avoidance, and um, also um, uh, looking on, on um, specialist species and um, non-specialist species, or rather uh, generalists, um, uh, in, in this way, div dividing the, um, those species which are used for the uh, uh, forest bird in index, which can be considered as specialists, and the others. Uh, then also uh, to the uh, nesting st strategy, like um, uh, whether it's uh, hole nesting or open nesting or um, the nest height or, um, or, or clutch size. Of course, uh, this list uh, could be continued, but uh, 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 but uh, during uh, during the, the short time, um, I couldn't couldn't look at the, at more. Um, of course, I, I made um, um, uh, different uh, models. Uh, um, where I tried to explain the slope with uh, with um, with um, uh, these variables, uh, either a single a single one of them or or combination of them, and um, using um, inverse uh, standard errors as a weighting factor, so that uh, those um, uh, those species with more clear trends, with more narrow st standard errors, have more weight than uh, than those with wide confi confidence interval. And now with the spoiler that um, all these uh, predictors were uninformative, uh, so uh, they didn't perform much better than the null model. So uh, this is uh, quite, uh, quite typical um, uh, graph. We can see that um, those uh, species which are used um, for the um, forest bird index um, um, uh, doesn't per perform any, any different than, uh, than all the other um, uh, um, common for uh, forest bird, uh, bird species. Um, um, uh, the only category where we, uh, we could see some, um, uh, some ki kind of uh, uh, significant difference uh, was when looking at the um, uh, food items, then um, um, I, I, uh, we, we can see that um, uh, the uh, spe species um, mainly feeding with um, uh, vertebrate prey have a lower trend uh, uh, than uh, than most of the others, um, and um, and uh, it is especially so if we if we look uh, on the these um, short-term trends. Um, uh, now the uh, forest bird index, um, you can see the um, list list of the species uh, which are used for uh, calculating the uh, forest bird index. And um, actually, um, uh, the, uh, the forest bird index is um, uh, statistically considered um, stable on, over this uh, period. However, uh, we see weak declining trend, and um, you, you can see the uh, trend slope is uh, below one. And um, uh, if this uh, trend con continues in, in the um, uh, following years, um, uh, then I expect already next year or uh, year after uh, next year um, uh, it will be um, uh, also um, uh, statistic statistically significant decline. We can see um, some of the um, ups and downs in this uh, um, uh, 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 trend line, and especially looking on the actual index values, which are which are these uh, open circles with with their con confidence intervals. We can see a very considerable drop of the index uh, between 2009 and um, uh, 2011, which followed um, uh, this uh, 
um, yeah, this de decision to double the, the cutting li limits in, in the st uh, state forest and um, uh, we, which also make, uh, make um, if we look on the um, logging statistics, um, uh, at that time logging is um, uh, much more intensive um, than, than uh, in the years b before and after that. And after that we can um, see in, uh, mainly uh, some of the recovery and some uh, fluctu fluctuations in, in the most, uh, uh, most uh, uh, recent years. Um, so, uh, uh, Let's have a look on um, some of the um, species groups uh, which are uh, con um, uh, um, 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 very, very well con connected to the forest, uh, like um, woodpeckers. And um, we can see uh, quite a wide vi variety of um, um, these trends. Um, there are uh, two, uh, two species uh, uh, with uh, significant declines, uh, which is a great spotted uh, woodpecker and um, lesser spotted um, uh, woodpecker. And also, if you look on the um, trend of the three-third um, woodpecker, we can, um, we can see um, um, decline. Uh, and um, uh, the, the last few years, the population is uh, significantly lower uh, than it was uh, at the start of the, um, uh, of, of the scheme. Um, uh, however, due, due to wide confidence intervals, um, uh, it classifies as, um, uh, as uncertain. And then, but um, in, uh, I have calculated also for the shorter period, um, uh, the 10 year trend of this species is um, a significant decline. Um, some other, other species, um, uh, uh, one of these species is, um, is having a um, uh, trend which classifies as stable, uh, black wood, uh, woodpecker. Um, in, in the past, it, it classified as. Um, a significant decline, uh, but uh, then its population increased and then um, it became stable. But the, if the, um, uh, the population drop um, continues in the following years, we can um, expect also that this species uh, will, uh, will be uh, significantly dec declining. Uh, for the other sp um, species, uh, the confidence intervals are, uh, are very wide and uh, so the uh, trends are uh, uncertain. If you look on the trends of the tit uh, uh, species, um, then um, we can uh, see that uh, um, uh, those which are um, uh, true, true forest specialists, like uh, crested tit, uh, willow tit, uh, marsh tit, uh, coal tit, again, uh, these species have um, uh, um, quite, uh, quite different trends, and, um, and um, uh, some of them, like uh, crested tit, is, um, is increasing. Um, um, uh, while uh, marsh tit uh, is uh, significantly declining, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the willow tit is, is uncertain, but, um, but then again, the, uh, uh, the last stretch uh, is uh, the species, we can see that species is uh, on decline. Um, uh, then again, uh, those species which are more connected with uh, um, urban environments like great tit and, uh, and, and blue tit, uh, they are doing uh, very well. Um, and then um, uh, the b birds of uh, prey, or um, uh, there, there are five, five species, and um, um, for two of them, the confidence, uh, confidence intervals are very wide, and we can get, can't get uh, um, any informative message, uh, message of, of these graphs. But if you look on the um, uh, common buzzard and, and both uh, hawk species, you know, we can see that, um, uh, that these populations are basically on decline. Um, the decline is significant for, uh, for, uh, for common buzzard and, uh, and goshawk, uh, while the, for the sparrowhawk is, um, is un unclear, but we, we can see that, uh, that last, year, last years are, um, uh, the population is, uh, is dropping. Uh, and finally, uh, the two species which have uh, significantly declined over the period and um, one of these species is um, hazel grouse. We, we, we can see that um, the most pop population drop um, has occurred in the first few years of, um, of the program, and, um, but it uh, continues to, uh, but on the slower pace um, since, since um, then. So, so for, for the whole period, the trend classification is steep decline. Well, well uh, for the last five years, it's, um, it's uncertain. And uh, 
if we look also on, on the, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to show the EBCC trend, but uh, uh, common European trend, but uh, unfortunately it uh, doesn't want to show up. Uh, so, so I can just uh, just tell that uh, that um, uh, for uh, for the whole, whole pan-European region, this species is also on the on decline. Um, um, the uh, the other uh, species uh, species with uh, with steep decline is uh, red wing, uh, which is having um, steep decline in um, uh, measured at both periods, the whole period and the last the last five years. And you can see that uh, actually this um, decline started to happen uh, after 2011. So it's uh, the last uh, seven year year stretch when when species species is um, uh, considerably on decline. If we look on the um, uh, European um, uh, trend, then um, um, uh, then also for the whole Europe uh, species is on decline. Um, um, what what could um, uh, could be the uh, reasons uh, for this species? Then, then actually, um, uh, probably we 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 see the very clear effect of uh, climate change here. Um, uh, probably uh, most of you know uh, the uh, European um, uh, uh, breeding bird atlas uh, made in um, late 90s, uh, uh, early uh, uh, late uh, late 1980s, uh, uh, early um, uh, 1990s, and um, uh, then this um, uh, climatic atlas, when the results of this uh, European breeding breed bird atlas were, have been. Um, uh, uh, translated in, into the uh, future distribution use, using these uh, uh, the available um, uh, climate models, we can see that um, uh, the red wing is uh, one of those species um, uh, uh, which, uh, which has uh, its uh, distribution area um, uh, retreating um, uh, northwards, and um, actually it's um, the, uh, the border is of its uh, southern, southern continuous dis distribution um, was uh, somewhere in the northern Poland um, at, the, at the time of um, this European breeding bird atlas. And it's ex expected that, um, uh, that its um, continuous di distribution will be uh, somewhere in the middle of uh, Finland at the end, end of this um, century. So uh, probably uh, well, what we are seeing here is um, uh, just um, a retreating of the, the distribution uh, area of this species. And also um, the um, uh, Latvian breeding bird atlases um, kind of um, con confirm this. We can look on the um, uh, 1980s, um, the first Latvian breeding bird atlas, when you can see the mostly continuous the, um, distribution over the whole country. And basically the same distribution um, 20 years later in the um, early 2000s. But if we look on the latest um, atlas, we can see that the uh, number of um, um, uh, squares where, where the species has been um, recorded is um, 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 that there are less such, um, uh, such squares. Uh, so uh, so um, we are experiencing experiencing decline in the numbers and, um, and also um, a fine scale distribution is um, um, decreasing. So um, uh, summing all this up, um, I can, um, can uh, at, at this moment tell that the common forest species um, are not per performing um, overall worse than, um, than other ecosystems um, uh, species. However, the, the two um, species which, are, uh, which have steep declines, are both uh, linked to the fo forests. And then um, uh, uh, the uh, species five-year trends uh, are worse than 13-year um, uh, uh, 13, uh, 13 trends, so uh, something bad is uh, happening um, uh, d during the, the recent years. And um, uh, of course, um, variance in the trend slopes uh, is more variable for the, those forest species which are occurring here all year round. So migratory species have better trends. And, uh, and um, also these um, uh, traits, uh, species traits which I, which I tested, uh, none of them um, can explain the variance in the, the trends of the forest birds. 
And finally, the, also the uh, forest bird index uh, has been overall stable, uh, but uh, uh, there is a st uh, still non-significant um, uh, declining uh, trend. So that's it. Thank you for, for listening, and uh, many thanks to all the many volunteers uh, that have been involved in co collecting, collecting the data. Thank you. Uh, questions, please? Paldies. Um, es uzdošu savus jautājumus latviešu valodā, jo tā jūs man labāk sapratīsiet noteikti. Uh, man ir divi jautājumi. Pirmais jautājums ir, cik būtiski ir jūsu metodikā noteikto termiņu ievērošana būtnu uzskaitē? Jūs rādījāt vienā no pirmajiem slaidiem, tur konkrēti, no kur līdz kuram datumam. Tas, tas ir jāveic. Kāda ir uh, iespējamā kļūda? uz rezultātiem, ja šie termiņi netiek ievēroti. Un uh, otrs mans jautājums ir saistīts ar ticamības intervālu. Jums visos šajos laidos 2005. gadā uh, rezultātu šis te ticamības intervāls ir nulle. Līdz ar to jautājums ir, kā jūs to, šos datus ieglāt vai tika uzskaitīti pilnīgi visi putni. Mežā vai tas bija kāds pieņēmums? Paldies! Uh. Šī, tā, sāksim ar, tā, ar tiem datumiem. Ah, ah, sorry, I should uh, reply, reply in English. Uh, let's start with, um, uh, with a question about the dates. Um, uh, these are recommended um, uh, periods when, when the counts should be performed. However, um, small, um, small, uh, small, small, um, uh, uh, counts can be for performed also uh, on rare cases uh, out, outside these um, uh, these periods. In the case uh, as the scheme is volunteer based, then uh, we, we have to account uh, that uh, people are in in um, in uh, investing their uh, their free time, uh, so they have to look uh, look for the avail available time. But um, uh, then again, um, overwhelming majority is w within these periods. These four, uh, four periods are uh, designed to cover uh, activity peaks for most of the, most of the species which, uh, which occur in the Latvia. Of course, uh, there can be um, uh, yearly differences in, in, these, pe in, in these peaks, and, um, uh, but um, uh, these, uh, uh, this doesn't uh, affect the, the trends. Regarding the uh, method methodology of um, calculation of indices, uh, this is the um, uh, s standard method uh, which is used in uh, the uh, whole of Europe for, uh, for the calculation of in indices and trends. And um, uh, the, the idea is uh, that um, all the following years are, are compared to the base year. Um, it's possible to choose uh, which year is a base year, but no, normally all pro programs use the first year as, as a base year. And that year um, doesn't have any confidence intervals because all the others are, are compared to that. Um, so uh, to, to have, um, um, to, to have um, uh, uh, significant dif differences from, from that year, uh, the, all the, um, uh, the, the years which are um, considered um, uh, have, to, have to be significantly different from, uh, from that year. And, and um, yeah, this is also the way how, uh, uh, how the trend slope is cal calculated using, uh, uh, using these uh, confidence intervals. Did I explain your... Uh, 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 okay. Yeah, uh, mums drusku sāk trūkt laiks, bet ir vēl viens jautājums. Man, last question. Thank you for the interesting talk. It's really good to see the bird trends. Uh, they're pretty hard to come by around. But I was wondering, have you thought about plotting the habitat loss over the same period, say using the same grid cell size? So if you pick a species and pick its ideal habitat and then plot what actually happens with the habitat? Uh, yeah, actually, this is the th thing to do in, in the future. It's, uh, of course, uh, uh, more demanding task because and you, you one have to digitize um, all, all the all the habitats for, for and their changes for, for for every year. And actually, we we have 
uh, partly partly done that uh, done that using using these orthophotos and the satellite images, and um, so this is the the future to uh, to uh, to build these models where um, these uh, habitat changes are are part of the explaining what, what is happening. It's not done yet. Another question is: Is the forestry data available, and is it suitable to actually use? Um, I'm guessing it's pretty hush-hush from what I understand. Um, I would uh, tell that uh, use of, um, uh, it's no, not readily, uh, readily available data. Um, and, and usually what you, what you can, can get is uh, some uh, sn time snapshot ab about uh, uh, what, what kind of um, forest stands, uh, what age uh, and uh, what, what species, etc. Et uh, but um, in, in this, uh, this dynamics where, where, where the forest um, uh, has disappeared or, or starting appear can, can be extracted through satellite images and uh, this is uh, what is being done but it's not completed yet. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next presentation by Andri Sawatinch on owls. <clears throat> Hello. It's uh, really exciting to be here today with all of you, all of you important people from all the important fields regarding forests, forestry, and birds and forests. Uh, today I'm going to talk about, uh, well, ecologist, ecologists' view on uh, how sustainable forestry should look like, or uh, more or less the means how we could get to the exact site which should be deemed for nature conservation, not necessarily entirely set aside, but in most cases. Uh, but before I do that, I would appreciate if we could uh, have a little bit of reminder from the morning session. Uh, I mean, there are so many definitions regarding what is sustainable forestry, and uh, Regarding the very end of my presentation, uh, I, I would like to remind you the, the very simplest of all the equations. It is, a, it is a system built on three pillars where equal, equal power has biodiversity, economical use, etc. So one third of whole system should be uh, left for for, uh, for biodiversity, and it is crucial as whole system will collapse if the critical amount of diversity will be lost. And the, the best way to deal with uh, which are the th those 33% of the whole system and where they are located uh, would be via evaluation of all the species within the system, but that would that would take like a lifetime or even several of those. Uh, therefore, the fundamental approach in ecology would be to use umbrella species. So again, a reminder, umbrella species are those that, uh, those species that, uh, how to say? Well, you remember what's umbrella species, don't you? I would expect some answers, but okay. Uh, by protection of umbrella species, you can, one can protect hold the system of other species and processes and functions underlying the, the niche of the certain umbrella species. And uh, regarding owls and Latvia and forests, well, let's start with owls in Latvia. There are six owl species breeding regularly on annual basis in Latvia, but not all of them are related to forests or entirely forest dependent. Those uh, with uh, market with red uh, shape around those four species are uh, forest dependent forest uh, forest dwelling owls. 
Uh, what's sad is that, uh, well, owls are not common species. They're not being monitored by, by common bird monitoring scheme. Therefore, you didn't saw the trends of, the, of those species pre, uh, from uh, Einer's presentation. You have to believe me that short-term trends are uh, showed a statistically significant decline. And uh, all the owls, as you probably expect, are predators, and you saw bird of prey trends from pre uh, previous presentation. But uh, regarding uh, the system we're dealing, as, uh, as those species are in decline, as they are dependent on, on, on uh, forest ecosystems, and as they are uh, predator species, they are considered as indicators of increased by the diversity values within landscapes. Due to species specific habitat relations, most of the species are also recognized as umbrella species, either in landscape level or patch level or forest ecosystem or conservation. Uh, and due to that, they are also protected by laws of Latvia, European Union, and uh, so on. Uh, when we are talking about, uh, about owls and their conservation, we are thinking about three pillars that form the needs of owls. Uh, most obvious thing is, is pre obviously, as, as predators depend on pre and there's uh, bottom-up regulation within population. Uh, another uh, great thing is, is climate, as it forms the distribution of species, cl uh, weather extremes or climatic extremes may be cause of uh, some local or national uh, uh, extinctions. But uh, the greatest thing here is, is the habitat, as uh, each species has its own ecological niche, it has its own habitat requirements, and the more suitable is the habitat, the better it buffers climatic extremes, weather extremes, it uh, makes, assures pre-availability, which is not necessarily its abundance in nature, it's, it, it's, it's the term that, that uh, uh, an owl can actually get the, the pre. So, uh, as we are talking about owls, the, the pre is, is of crucial importance, and uh, the problem here, which we have to remember, obviously, is the severe problems with the dynamics of small mammals in Latvia. Within the last decade, the population uh, dynamics has collapsed for all, all the small mammal species. Uh, which is sad for everyone dependent on voles and directly or indirectly everyone is dependent on voles. But uh, to, the, to the left you can see the, the raw data, well that's the best we have. And the thing to notice is that the abundance in nature varies with habitat. There are some fluctuations, there are some, uh, some places where there's basically no voles r remaining due to something. But there are some places where, where there's uh, a lot of walls. But overall trend is, is uh, loss of dynamics and, and small, small relative abundance in nature. And as owls are dependent on walls, it has direct impact on the owl populations. And uh, it has many effects, but uh, the most uh, direct link is uh, regarding breeding success. And here, just as it's so amazing, uh, I show you the breeding success of eagle owl, which you can see is uh, the, the red line on the bottom right chart. Uh, this is the last cohort, uh, cohort length of eagle owl, and its uh, breeding success number of fledglings per, per successful nest has been uh, extremely low. And uh, by simple correlation, uh, we can see that it's uh, highly linked with the small mammal abundance in nature. Uh, therefore, well, of course, we have to think about small mammals. We have to th think about reasons why there's not enough of those. But uh, really, OK. Uh, but uh, the system that we are using in our an analysis lays uh, on uh, ecological niche or, or Theory, it's based on uh, presence point analysis. And uh, presence point is, uh, is uh, 
breeding related observation of each of the species and as it's breeding related it marks suitable enough conditions for breeding to, to be at least tried. And the overall relation is uh, that the more uh, presence points you have within some part of an ecosystem complex of habitats, then the better, obviously, is the situation. And this is all uh, modeled in, in, on the basis of over 600 ecogeographical variables, habitat descriptors, to obtain a habitat suitability map. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, the first results are often just the first results, and we were really willing to, to have a good evidence-based opinion on, on which sites has to be protected and for what reason. Therefore, we did intensive uh, field work. We, we, we went out in a field looking for, for each of the owl species in uh, over 1,000 places and redid all the analysis to get the, the clear result uh, of habitat suitability. And uh, so the system that we are working uh, is, well, ecological, uh, based in ecological niche theory, but we've eliminated the, the movement part and we are focusing on, uh, habitats, uh, on habitats directly. As I mentioned before, they buffer all the other negative effects if they are suitable. And what was very challenging for me uh, to, to, to set the objectives of this presentation as, as for our international uh, society uh, and for me as an ecologist, it would be, of course, uh, so much more pleasant to talk about the exact factors, the drivers of species distribution. What are the reasons why owls are where they are and what affects this? But uh, for the means of, of time limits and uh, effectiveness uh, for further discussions with our forestry part of, of uh, audience, I'll be focusing more on the sites, I mean the product of habitat suitability maps uh, regarding where we should focus and why we should focus our conservation efforts, protection efforts uh, on the map. So this is, uh, everything is based on uh, maximum entropy analysis. Uh, the analysis, uh, well, its, its resolution is 500 meter grid cell that's, uh, uh, that ac accumulates information of uh, 25 meter grid and also from surroundings of up to two and a half kilometers. And uh, in the very beginning, we have uh, around 633 ecogeographical parameters, but uh, until the very end, including fi field work, we're, uh, we're finished our, the best model with a set of 20 up to 80 parameters, meaningful parameters for each species. So which means when, when you'll see the maps for each cell, for the reason of, of color for each cell, there are 20 to 80 uh, arguments why this exact place has this exact relative value. And this was done, in, as I mentioned, in the Maximum uh, Maxent program. It's, it's free where uh, you can, everyone can play with it if, if you want to like, check my, my, my results. And then it was uh, uh, reassessed uh, using so software zonation for prioritization of the sites for, uh, by the means of species extinction risks. And this was done for each species separately and then pulled together. This was also challenging. I, I, uh, in, uh, I, I'm uh, preparing also the, the, the whole species pool uh, zonation priority sites, but it's, it's simpler and easier to explain this on a on, uh, step-by-step, species-by-species approach. And uh, this program, it, it works with uh, uh, island bi biogeography geography methods and implements it in, in uh, at some level at, at a metapopulation system. It's very cool. There's a lot of literature to read about it. And this is the output. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to show you information regarding four species, but I'll go in, in a bit more details regarding one of the species, uh, the Eurasian pygmy owl. Uh, you can see the first out output here. This is the habitat suitability map that the output of the 
of the uh, max maximum entropy analysis, the greener, the darker is the color, the, the more suitable is the habitat. And this is based on fairly nice uh, model. You can see statistics uh, on the small picture. Uh, the thing regarding all those uh, habitat suitability maps is uh, it's, it's uh, relative suitability. It's not directly linked with uh, species presence, but species presence is dependent on habitat suitability, but suitability is ranked uh, like rel relative to the national suitability. The best, the most suitable site is the most suitable from those we have in Latvia. It doesn't mean the highest suitability around the globe. We have to take this into account. And uh, the value of each cell is based on uh, some uh, ecogeographical eco uh, factors, and, uh, in this, and they're uh, compiled uh, from different levels of landscape. And in case of Eurasian pygmyol, it's dependent on uh, old growth forests, and in this case, not, not by ecological terms, but uh, forestry terms, perhaps. Uh, old forest, major forests exceeding the cutting gauge, and it is important to have those in, in uh, quite, large, quite large areas, up to two kil kilometers surrounding the potential, pot potential nest sites. And of those, the most important are uh, mixed forests and uh, coniferous old forests. But uh, each territory, uh, each place in landscape consists of, of some local cells, and those cells must be formed by forest, I mean it's forest species that's pretty much straightforward, uh, but not any forest is good enough forest. Those forests must be uh, less disturbed, and by this I mean uh, any forest, uh, by this any forestry activity is meant. Not only clear cut, actually everything except the clear cut, because clear cut affects the, the tree cover as such, in analysis cell, here are the, uh, all the remaining factors like, uh, you know, owls are uh, acoustic predators and, and uh, their successful hunting strategies depend on uh, silent enough uh, environment. And uh, here comes the, the ecological part, uh, the trees within the local cells, they must be large. It's not necessarily to be, uh, for them to be old, but they have to be large. They have to be at least 40 centimeters in di diameters. Of course, young, younger trees won't reach those, high, uh, those, those uh, sizes, but, but uh, they're expected, expected to. And uh, again, what's, what's uh, related to existing literature regarding this species, the most important uh, tree species for breeding are spruce and aspen. But uh, as well for, for breeding cavity, you need only single structure within the, the cell. It's, it's enough pro possibly with uh, one or two or three such trees. Therefore, the, the exact effect, you, you don't see it, it uh, as so important. Uh, regarding those graphs, you won't see them much anymore. I should start with it probably. Those shows, uh, this shows effect of each factor uh, within the, that uh, combined model, while everything else is being kept at maximum uh, level of entropy. So those are direct effects of, of, of uh, each. Uh, the next step, well, we, by this point, uh, if we don't know a lot of uh, owl-related uh, literature, we should uh, understand that uh, pygmy owl truly is Habitat specialist, it's dependent on uh, less disturbed forest, on, on uh, more, more uh, primeval uh, forest nature, and therefore it is important to, to protect it. I mean, uh, in, in uh, traditionally managed forest, it cannot thrive. Uh, f uh, next, what we did uh, was uh, the priority site selection. Our target was to, to have a the, the direct output, of course, is a priority for each cell from zero to, to, to 100, 100 being the highest importance. But, uh, but we are always looking for sort of black and white picture uh, sites that are priorities for species uh, versus the sites that all can be lost. And the balance point, point between extinction and, and uh, survival of population or ratio, fraction of population was at 10.5% uh, uh, of the landscape. Uh, by 
conservation or of species within those the most suitable 10.5% of the entire landscape, EI the whole country, we can for sure save species uh, by 28.4%. The extinction risk throughout the eternity would be only 28.4% if the quality of those 10.5% of landscape wouldn't change and everything else would be lost for species. I mean, everything, like the in, entire remaining forest would be, would be uh, one great clear cut, which is obviously not going to happen, hopefully. But uh, the thing is, if we do conserve species in those 10.5% effectively, uh, the extinction, true extinction risk even is, is being uh, reduced by every year when habitat suitability is increasing. So it's, it's not quite favorable, favorable reference range, but uh, something close to it. Uh, that's just theory about uh, how much uh, of the uh, country we need for protection of species. Uh, but this is where those, those uh, sites are located. And uh, here, uh, again, catching up with uh, something we, uh, we heard previously, uh, the, the barred uh, polygons in the map of Latvia, those are Natura 2000 sites, microreserves, and uh, microreserve buffer zones. And the orange uh, polygons, those are priority sites for Eurasian pygmy owl. The thing is, many, many Natura 2000 sites are not good enough for species. Uh, one may, of course, claim that uh, obviously our forestry practice is that awesome and that sustainable and that good, good for the species so that uh, it persists better outside the Natura 2000 sites. But the argument I'll, I'll show you later on is that we have so shitty, I, I'm sorry, Natura 2000 sites that, well, they're not much different from the uh, forest anywhere outside the Natura 2000 sites. Uh, and uh, the, the best way for the owl, of course, uh, to deal with this uh, conservation issue would be simply to add the uh, territories, priority territories from outside the Natura 2000 sites uh, to the Natura 2000 sites, but, but I mean effective, uh, effective uh, to, to do the conservation measures effectively. And if we do so, then we could uh, reduce this, the extinction risk momentarily to amazing 22%, which is good. And it will drop with time more. The problem with uh, Natura 2000 sites is uh, what you see here. Uh, this is based on uh, Hansen's work. You may know it as Global Forest Watch. Well, by the use of, of ICE radars and, and Landsat uh, uh, satellite maps, uh, they've uh, acquired forest cover uh, at uh, year 2000 throughout the globe, and uh, annually, with the use of ICE radar, they're checking where the forest cover is being lost. Uh, here you can see with crosses and uh, white boxes, you can see the forest cover in different uh, uh, functional zones of uh, whole Latvian Natura 2000 sites. And uh, the idea to trend to get here uh, would be uh, simple. Uh, the more forest there is, the, the more strict are the legislation towards protecting it, in theory. But in practice, we can see the, uh, with, with the open circles, we can see the, the proportion of forest cover being lost that has been lost with uh, 16 years. And uh, the, the, uh, at, at some places, uh, this uh, proportion of lost forest cover or tree cover is 24%. That's a lot for another 2000 site. Uh, one may say that this is not very uh, accurate way of, of uh, like measuring forest loss. Uh, for example, because there are wind thrown stands, there are beaver polarizations, etc. Isn't it true? Uh, the approach that I uh, suggest is uh, to use the strict nature reserve as, uh, as, a, as a 
uh, correction factor, uh, there is no forestry allowed in strict nature reserves, and there is no illegal forestry that we know of uh, in strict nature reserves. But there is illegal uh, forestry in all the rest of the functional zones that we are aware of. Uh, therefore, we, we cannot use the state forest registry to measure the, the amount of uh, forest uh, proportion of forest lost because, well, it's, it, it doesn't know anything about the illegal part. And if you correct those, uh, all the remaining uh, uh, functional zones with the strict nature reserve level, then you can see that uh, the highest uh, forest loss level is 1% of forest cover a year. Which, was, which would be okay by forestry means of uh, sustainable forestry if that would be outside the Natura 2000 site. Because this 1% a year would mean simply uh, full regeneration of forest with an economical cycle of 100 years. On average, and, and in Latvian case, that would be pine forest. Am I right? More or less I'm right. Uh, on average, the the proportion of forest cover lost is 7%. Like, pull everything together, get a simple arithmetic average. And 7% within 16 years is a reference to, to birch or aspen rotation period. So our Natura 2000 sites are actually in, in really bad situation and not much different from forests outside them. And if we remember the, the map I showed you, that the very fast jumping to conclusions never do that, uh, would be let's get rid of all of those use, entirely useless areas that are existing only on paper, and let's start over with, with uh, better arguments. But of course that would be hard and uh, would uh, evolve some, some huge sums of mon money that our country should, should uh, give, give to European Union because of, well, uh, losing all the Natura 2000 uh, network. We don't want that. Uh, that was a story about pygmy owl. And now let us run fast, fastly uh, through the other four of the species. This is Tang ten Mounds owl, and for colleagues from uh, United States, this is known as boreal owl. Uh, species is in grave danger in Latvia, as currently we are having just. Uh, perhaps 10% from the population that we had in 1991. We simply don't have any data on what, what uh, was before it. It's highly dependent on, on uh, uh, mature and actually old growth of forests throughout the landscape, not only small patches, but landscape. Remember I told you that owls are landscape level by diversity indicators. Here the story is, is a bit better. We can see some Natura 2000 sites that are good Natura 2000 sites that we saw already before that are, well, working for forest conservation, for species conservation. B uh, but species also, about half the population exist outside the Natura 2000 network, and so on. Next species is, is eagle owl, again in gr grave dr dangers but uh, not because of, of forestry direct impacts as much as, as uh, because of wall impacts. But again, the availability of, owl, uh, of walls for an owl depends on the habitat suitability, which is again linked with uh, old growth forests, but uh, a bit more open version of them. And the last species is Ural owl. Uh, the on only one where you could uh, argue the assumption, violation of movement assumption from Hutchinson's theory, uh, but uh, uh, because species has limited range in, uh, in Latvia, it's only to the east from Riga Meridian, with only some few pairs breeding uh, westwards, but as you can see, our habitat suitability map has dealt with it amazingly good. I'm really proud of this. And uh, for those who don't know, Ural owl uh, is the crazy one. Uh, until several years ago, it was the, the mother species of Strix varia from uh, United States. And she's really crazy. She, she's attacking everyone getting close to its nest, and even forestry tractors 
that are trying to cut the nest. We have many such uh, occasions here in Latvia. And therefore, the straightforward conclusion could be of some person could be that forestry is, is the disturbance of forestry is not a threat for this species. But unfortunately, that's not true. Either we are using the uh, analysis of, of nests, of uh, forestry practice surrounding the nest, nests and returning of breeding to the nest or habitat suitability and as we see that disturbance as a process, as a noise, is detrimental for existence of, of uh, territory of this species. Uh, I mentioned that uh, at some point I'm going to pull all the results together and this is where I've done it. Uh, I agree it's, it's perhaps a bit hard to see the, the, the common causes, but uh, the color means the number of species for which exact site is a priority for long-term conservation. Again, again, and again, a lot of Natura 2000 sites are not. Okay, yeah. Another 2,000 sites are designated also for grassland species, for lake species, for mire species, etc. But many of them are also, many of those that are, uh, that we can see as, as uh, uh, inappropriate for any owl long-term conservation uh, were originally meant also for forest bird conservation. So our network sucks big time again. Uh, and a lot of areas outside Natura 2000 network are important. Some are more important, some are less important. The heavy news here are that uh, the conservation of all owl species uh, deems 16.6% of whole territory of Latvia, which is about 32% of forests. And uh, what, makes this, what makes it even worse that most of it, almost exclusively all of it, is outside the Natura 2000 network. And what's the problem with uh, micro reserves? I agree that, that that's, that's the coolest thing ever that's done in 20th century, but they are too small. Micro reserve for uh, pygmy owl is just 2 to 10 hectares. But pygmy owl needs at least 100 hectares for conservation. I mean, okay, yeah, we, we can create micro reserve and then look how the species disappears because everything around micro reserve is being uh, logged or managed otherwise inappropriately for the species conservation. And in most cases, micro reserves are too small. So we have to change the scale. And we have to do it fast. Good news is, I know that this is being, the same thing is being done with woodpeckers. And by the middle of this year, we'll probably have the same maps and situation description for all the woodpecker species. And from what I've seen uh, from the working results of woodpecker analysis, those are the same places. So that the in increase in, in landscape necessary for protection of and owls plus woodpeckers are all the important umbrella species of forest uh, conservation. Well, of course, except, except uh, for caper saley, but uh, our state forestry company does an amazing job with it. Uh, this is what we need for conservation of all the uh, forest species in Latvia. And one last sentence is that, uh, uh, like, I would like to talk about this in intelligent manner, preferably. But the good news is, if we follow this scenario, it doesn't matter how we are working outside those areas. And by it doesn't matter, I mean there should be some ground rules so that not not everyone gets disappointed, but the uh, economy could be a driver outside. If you need shorter cycle for forestry, make it shorter, but don't go there, etc. Thank you.
questions, please? Everybody is shocked. <laughs> Was it that good? It is actually a comment, not a question, uh, about your remark that the micro reserves are too small for pygmy owls. Uh, as you know, uh, at the very beginning, there were almost no species for which we had proper information how much do they need. Uh, Capricale was actually the only example and only because of help from outside. So, uh, and we are changing these uh, at least proposals, it doesn't necessarily immediately result in changing legislation, but that's just the next step for you. You have good data, you have to prove that this is what they need, go ahead. Thank you, we've been discussing this too much in my sauna. Anyone else, please? Well, actually, we go very short in time. Last question, please. Atļaušos latviski uzdot. Es tik tiku vien dzirdējuši par mikroliegumiem. Es arī paskatījos pieredzes ārzemes, kādas ir ar mikroliegumiem. Un man, protams, patīk, ka mešsaimnieku pārsteidza Somijas piemērs. Nu, jūs arī minēt skaitli, 15% aptuveni, bet man ir tāds jautājums reāli. Ja šī aizsargājuma sugā vairs nav konstatējuma mikroliegumā, kādus mehānismus jūs piedāvāsat, lai piemēram īpašniekam ļautu atkal saimniekot šai īpašumā? Jā, man jūsu viedoklis tieši interesē, kā varbūt drusku pretējais pārna pārstāvja, bet man interesanti ir ieklausties jūsu viedoklis. That is a question from private forest owner. What to do if the species disappeared from the micro reserve? Uh, to begin with, there is a procedure uh, regarding the, the uh, deletion of micro reserve from the data sets. Like you have to prove there is nothing else with the similar uh, necessary necess necessity of conservation measures. And by my means, if we can implement this, we have we can give up all the owl micro reserves like that. Thank you. But well, to be honest, they are all inside, anyways, except for one, or oh, for two. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next presentation will be from Agrita Jona on wolves. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm from Latvian State Forest Research Institute, Silova, and I'm also a PhD student here in Latvian University. And I will be, uh, I will talk about uh, wolves in Latvian forests a little bit. Uh, so wolf status in Latvia. Wolf is a protected species within allowance for restricted use in Latvia. And Latvia is one of few European countries where, where wolf harvest takes place. Uh, before joining European Union, uh, wolf harvest took place all through the year, but uh, since joining European Union in 2004, restrictions for wolf hunting were introduced, and now we have a closed season from 1st April till 15th July, and we set a hunting quota for each hunting season. In the beginning, this hunting quota was around 130, 150 animals per season, but in the last couple of seasons, this number was 300 and 280 animals per season. Uh, however, despite this high uh, hunting pressure, population status is deemed favorable. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, number estimations of wolves in Latvia. One is uh, official statistics, 
and other is what scientists think, and this official statistics shows uh, higher numbers than what scientists estimate. Uh, in SILA, we use uh, for a couple of years a method that uh, estimates those numbers using age structured population reconstruction methods uh, that use these age at harvest data. And these methods have a couple of, uh, more than a couple of uh, conditions that need to be fulfilled so that the results would be precise. And unfortunately, we can't be sure that we do fulfill all of these conditions. So it is more of an experiment, and we are still observing how these uh, results change year from year when we add new data. And here you can see the last results uh, where three different approaches were used. So it's uh, three different math mathematical calculations. Uh, but as you can see, results from all of them were quite similar. And uh, estimation of wolf population in the last several years is around six to 700 animals in Latvia. And as you can see, those animals are distributed quite evenly almost in all the country. Uh, however, there is an empty spot in the middle of the country. Uh, both those, m those maps show data from uh, harvested animals, so we can't be certain that uh, no wolves live in those empty places. However, these areas are quite heavily populated by humans. Also, there are many farmlands in Zemgale, and also high highways and the wide rivers. So most likely, wolves don't live there constantly, but they do cross this area when traveling from one part of Latvia to another. This uh, first map shows you data from five-year period. Uh, the bigger dots show places where wolves were harvested in the last three years and where breeding was uh, confirmed. Uh, the middle-sized dots show places where wolves were hunted in the last three years but no breeding was confirmed. And the smaller dots show places where at least one wolf uh, was hunted in the last five years. And confirmation of breeding we get from uh, examination of harvested wolf females where we check whether they have uh, placental scars or no. Mm, the other map shows you data also from harvested animals from the last hunting season when 280 <coughs> animals were harvested. And as you can see from both maps uh, from different periods, the wolf distribution is quite stable in Latvia. So what is important for wolves in their habitat? Uh, availability of food and safe hiding places for resting and denning is uh, main requirements and also nearness of water is important. Uh, today forests are main wolf habitat in Europe because carnivores feel safe there. However, about a thousand years ago, wolves were living mainly in open landscapes and it was uh, human persecutions that made them seek refuge in forests. Uh, bogs are not the favorite place for wolves, however, they do choose small mineral soil islands in bogs as they are difficult to access for humans and they can make safe denning places in here. And wolves can also occur in farmlands provided that they are interspersed with forest patches and other suitable hideaways. Uh, in Latvia as well, forests are the main habitat for wolves. Uh, so let's take a look at how human activities in forests can affect uh, wolf living conditions. Uh, contrary to many other species, uh, Forestry can have quite a positive effect on wolf living conditions. So, it, uh, for example, it can be uh, new tree stands uh, that are quite attractive to ungulates, and ungulates are the main prey species for wolves in Latvia. And so, ungulates concentrate in these uh, tree stands in quite uh, quite high numbers, and so they get easy, they get easier to spot for wolves. Also, wolves like roads and ditches that uh, forestry activities make uh, as it makes them easier to travel uh, travel around. And also, thinning and clear cuts make it easier for wolves to locate and catch their prey. So as you can see, wolf isn't exactly the best species to use as an indicator for sustainable forests and forestry, uh, as they can benefit from quite a lot of forestry activities. Uh, another activity concerning forests are hunting is hunting, and of course it has negative effects on wolf population if hunting is done on the wolves themselves. However, it can have quite a positive effect uh, when considering uh, wild ungulates. Hunters are interested in keeping high numbers of game animals, uh, and for example, they provide supplemental feeding for those animals in winter. 
so that they can survive this season. And of course, the more animals there are in the forest, the better it is for wolves. A little bit about those animals. Uh, here you can see graphs on three service species. It's roe deer, red deer, and uh, moose. As you can see, numbers of those animals are quite high, and also ungulate harvest each season is quite high. And the trends for all the populations are increasing at the moment. Uh, a bit different situation is with uh, wild boars. Um, their numbers decreased dramatically since uh, summer 2014 when African swine fever got to Latvia. At the moment, this disease has spread uh, almost all over the country with an exception of uh, the most southeastern part of Latvia. And uh, it was thought that uh, the spread of this disease will have an effect also on wolf population in regard to the wolf diet, but I'll speak about it a bit later. Also, we have a lynx in Latvia, and it can be considered as a competitor for a wolf. However, from what we've found, uh, this competition isn't exactly pronounced, and they can share their habitats and their prey species quite amicably. So about food habits. Um, all the results you see in those pictures are from data that are obtained from wolf, wolf stomach content analysis that are done on harvested animals. As I already mentioned, uh, wild ungulates are the main prey species for wolves in Latvia, especially wild cervids and especially roe deer. And uh, those cervid species can make up to 50% of, wolf, of wolf's diet. Another important prey species is wild boars that can make up to 30% of wolf diet. And as you can see, other species are quite unimportant and rarely found. Uh, an interesting species to mention is beaver. And it seems that whenever there are some problems with the main prey species of wolves, they switch over to the consumption of beaver. For example, about an eight years ago, there was a uh, decline of roe deer numbers due to very harsh winter conditions. And in that period, we could observe that the roe deer proportion in wolf diet uh, decreased and beaver proportion increased. The other, picture, the other picture shows you uh, what happened when uh, African swine fever got to, got to Latvia. Uh, it was thought that uh, it will have negative effects on wolf diet because uh, wild boar will die out and there will be nothing for them to eat. And so they will, they will prey more on roe deer and probably bring down roe deer numbers. And also there were ideas that they will uh, uh, attack livestock more. However, what we found out is that in a year after this disease has uh, started to spread, the wild boar consumption in wolf diet uh, increased up to almost 50%. And apparently, sick animals were easy to catch, and also already dead animals were easy to find and consume. And uh, in the next couple of years and today, we can see that this uh, wild boar proportion in wolf diet has come back to its usual one third, one fourth part of the diet. So no lack in food in food base was observed concerning wild boar, and also no negative effects as far as wolf diet comes were observed on roe deer as well. Uh, we do have an increase in uh, depredation cases on livestock. However, here we also can't be sure if it's really an increase in those cases, or it's just that farmers have become more active and started to report on those cases more. Um, in the end, I would like to mention some projects uh, which uh, provided data for this presentation and which are all main projects about the uh, large carnivores in Silova. And it would be changes in the population of large carnivore depending on hunting pressure. And it's uh, something like large carnivore monitoring, uh, uh, which uh, researches wolf and lynx populations in Latvia, and it's been going on for more than a decade. We also had a genetic project uh, for developing system for genetic monitoring of wildlife species that included wolves. And also we did a renewal of gray wolf conservation plan. And our main uh, research subjects in Silva regarding wolf and also lynx are their population status, uh, demography, reproduction status, diet, uh, parasites, and also genetic. And in the end, I would like to thank my colleagues without whom this presentation wouldn't be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, please, on wolves and or other species? 
Okay, no questions. Thank you. Sorry. We are back in time schedule, even some four minutes uh, more. Uh, so now we have a coffee break and we shall start again at uh, 4 o'clock p.m. <laughs>